How's it going, everybody? This is Alex Caceres, and you're listening to Story of the Fight. Will, you got to say something. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to church. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ramiro's out this week, uh, but that's fine. He said, uh, said screw you guys. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to be a part of it anymore, so he's gone. <laughs> uh, Ramiro's out, but that's okay. Uh, we got Rich here. Uh, oh, sorry. You want to introduce me, Will? Yeah, we got Rich the casual, Rich the producer. Normally behind the scenes, he's going to fill in for Ramiro because Ramiro has family priorities. If you guys uh, haven't you know, met Ramiro in real life, he's a short man, but he's got big shoes to fill, and I'm going to do my best. I, I'm not going to have the strike count. I'm not going to have some of the analysis that a man with many, many years of beer drinking, whiskey drinking, and MMA watching has, but I will have the layman's take that may be refreshing in times where you're used to just listening to Rogan and John Anik all the time. You're going to get rich, man. Something never before seen. Rich. Never before heard. Unique, a unique perspective. Exactly. Oh, Romero, Romero's actually with us in spirit. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Look yeah, he says, Let's go. I guess he can watch, but he can't come in. <laughs> come into work. Look at, that. Look at that picture of young Romero down there. <laughs> it's like when somebody calls into work but still shows up to shop, you know? <laughs> you see him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, I thought you were sick. Oh, man. Where can we, where can we uh, yeah, in spirit. Uh, Ramiro might not be here, Rich, but where can they find us no matter who is here? Yeah, man. So thank you guys for tuning in on YouTube. Thank you guys for liking, subscribing, commenting. We'd like to respond to everybody that comments live or after the fact. Uh, leave a review, rating a review. We're able to be found on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Anchor.fm, Breaker. Uh, I think I said Google Podcasts already. Spotify, Radio Public, and any, anywhere else you can find podcasts. Anywhere they're sold. They're usually free, but it's still a transaction. We want you to subscribe. We want to track those things. Get the metrics up. We're trying to get sponsored one day. We want to go to UFC fights live and in person, and we can only do it by amassing a following. So we really appreciate every single one of you guys. Please follow us on social media. Will knows where that's at. Twitter, Instagram, Story of the Fight. Facebook chat, Story of the Fight chat. Somebody will chat with you in there. We don't know who it'll be, but that's part of the fun. It's like a roulette. There's a TikTok. Yeah. Uh, we don't know what kind of content is going on. Just like week to week, you don't know exactly what you're getting from our show other than fun. So we know it'll be fun. But besides that, it's a bag of surprises. It's a bag of surprises. <laughs> yeah, we need to get Rich to just do this every episode. We'll oh, just have man. him pop in and do this. Yeah, man. <laughs> Gotta have the hype. Man. Rich the casual, but not uh, not in production. Jeez Louise. Nah, man. I've been doing podcasts for years. Yeah, and it shows. All right. Uh, last night, we had uh, UFC Vegas 47, uh, Strickland versus Hermanson. Um, not like the most uh, – <laughs> the champ is MIA. Yeah, we're going to have to take that belt from Ramiro if he can't even make the show. You know what I mean? I guess you're He's the interim gonna... champ, Will. Is that the case? Yeah. Oh. Or whoever the... outperforms the other one on this show will battle for the for the Forget title, the... I guess. Forget the it... This is you the interim I don't want to win it. <laughs> yeah but yeah ramiro's got the belt um maybe i need to get that back uh but yeah last night we had uh hermanson versus strickland um not the most high stakes as far as rankings goes for a main event but strickland at least is on a um he's on a train right now he's he's climbing the rankings um hermanson's kind of been relegated to almost like a gatekeeper type position after the loss to vittori um so Strickland's been talking like, oh, he needs to get to the belt, needs to get to the belt. It's the first time he's been focused on getting to the belt. And uh, yeah, I don't know. The performance last night, I don't know if it's really worth getting a title shot uh, on. He did uh, he did a fantastic job of, of getting hit and, and not getting hit, or hitting and not getting hit, I should say. So uh, who's, the, who's the British guy on the commentary, Will? Because you sound a little bit like him. I know you don't watch the commentary most often, but what's that guy's name? Do you know? 
Bisping, Michael Bisping. Yeah, Bisping. He does a great job. They talk about. Um, I mean, I really enjoyed the commentary from the team today because they didn't stray from the action very often. They had some jokes that kept it light, lighthearted. But he did mention that in about the fourth round. He's saying, "Okay, we know you've won this fight. We know that you can have great defense, defending the takedown, taking the jab, and controlling it with just your main jab, his right hand, checking all those leg kicks with his lead leg, which I think it was his left leg." Um, yeah, yeah. He got he got uh, bloodied up on the nose, but other than that, it was like a flawless performance, ne- seemingly. But he was saying, I don't think you're going to be jumping the line with a performance like this. He wants him to go take it, take the fight, yeah. not just win the fight and cruise it. The next contender isn't going to be cruising to the championship. They got to take their shot, um, which is what I'm hearing from you. But as someone... Uh, and I'll let you finish your your side in a, in a moment. Yeah. But as someone that <laughs> has never watched this man fight ever before, um, what I took away from it was like, does this guy sweat? Like, does this guy <laughs> like is he human? Is he breathing hard? This guy was seemed so in control. He seemed like like he was fighting in there with his son that he's teaching how to fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he's just yeah. like, come on, hit me at the end, hit me. Go straight up the middle. He's yelling at him. Calls him a yeah. pussy. You can't say that on, on uh, UFC Airways, but we can't hear. This is R-rated yeah. adults only. Uh, I'm going to rate it with an explicit tag when we put the show up later. But, but Story of the fight, XXX. Yeah, exactly. Every takedown, he was just uh, knocking him off, knocking his hands away, setting him up. I think he even got – he had to get the underhooks out one time. But uh, Whoa, just, look at it was, Rich yeah, the casual. Hey, man, you watch underhooks. 11 fights in a row and you pick up on some of the terminology, okay? <laughs> But, okay, but uh, did you watch? Did you watch from the first fight of the night to the main event, or did yeah, you watch? Yeah, I didn't from the do main the Ramiro way. I watched. There you uh, go. Yeah, so the the last fight, the one we're talking about uh, in my mind, is the most fresh. But I got notes on everything else, so I'm not gonna let you guys down. <laughs> but yeah, dude, I was like, this guy is so cool. And then they mentioned, uh, "Are you a Sean Strickland fan? You seem like you would be." Me? Yeah, yeah. I'm a big Sean. Strickland. So going into this fight, uh, and and shout out, you touched on um, the commentary team sticking with the actual fight itself. And if anybody's listened to me in the past, Felder, Bisming, Fitzgerald is my dream team. When Felder or Fitzgerald went live on Instagram before the before the event, mm-hmm. and he's and he like pans over to the desk and it's Bisping and Felder, and I was like, rejoice! Nice, I think they're nice, by nice. far the most professional. They're the best crew, I think. And Ramiro uh, hashtag DC hater. They even threw some shade at, at uh, Bisping threw shade at, at DC in the broadcast. He's like, they were talking about wrestling, and he's like, somebody was like. Uh, I know Daniel Cormier is not here to give us his Olympic wrestling experience. And then uh, Bisping is like, oh, I'm glad he's not here. I yeah. don't want to hear his awesome breakdowns of wrestling. And it was a joke, but, you know, I was like, somebody appreciates that for sure. No, Rogan. Yeah. So, um, so Bisping uh, or, or sir, uh, Strickland, I'm a big Strickland fan. He's kind of leaning into this whole psychopath thing. So he's getting like, <laughs> he's kind of starting to like get the, a fan base. Right. Um, and, and, but, it comes with the flip side, right? It's a double edged. There's pros and cons because there's a lot of people who are like, "God, this guy's so cringy. He's talking all this shit. Like, he's a psychopath. It seems fake." Blah blah blah. The reality is, he's getting interest, right? And that's what you need to do, especially if you were trying to get a title shot. You need people interested in you. Uh, HLB Comer points he's it out right there. <laughs> yeah, his interviews have been. A ble- I mean, the guy's hilarious. And uh, before he now, now he's kind of bit. He's in the spotlight, right? Now he's in the main event and all this stuff. But before, I mean, he's always kind of had the same style where uh, he just kind of walks you down. He just keeps walking towards you. His feet are are super close together. It's like the opposite of what what you get taught, right? You don't, especially in MMA. In boxing, that's more okay because there's no threat of a takedown. But when your feet are so close together, your legs are close together, it's easy for someone to just grab that double leg, pull your legs out, and you're down. Mm. But he just like... He just walks forward with just like a, a such disregard for anything you might be able to throw his way. And exactly, Ramiro. So he does a really good job of uh, every time you throw towards him, he's blocking like out here, right? Like he, he blocks before they even get close. And that's yeah, what that's saying, something right? that I was like, I don't think I've seen this all night. So his blocks yeah. were coming up here. And I'm like, I don't even think I ever noticed someone blocking so far away from their body. It's usually when they're near the face or by their head. They um, shell up, right? Yeah. And, uh, shout out to Ramiro. He's mentioning his footwork is, is enough to avoid shots just by themselves, deflecting the punches that he mentioned. But yeah, just the, the footwork and having his leg off the ground, of course, to absorb it without having to plant and take 
wear on the knees or the joints or whatever, which was mm -hmm. crazy. And uh, and just like, and then the final thing before I interrupt you, I'm 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 <laughs> going to interrupt you for the second time. Definitely not the final time. But they <laughs> yeah. mentioned during the uh, broadcast, do you even? I don't know if this is true, but maybe it's it's playing into the psychopath or his persona, or it could be true. They say, do you even lift weights? Do you even run? And he's like, yeah. no, I just fight I just all fall. the time. And his his fall. body type is so like kind of lean, but not skinny. And mm -hmm. not bulked up uh, compared to Pure the, other, uh, the other middleweights uh, that I think are fighting next week. Adesanya, right? And then mm -hmm. and some Whitaker, other, some other guy, yeah, yeah Whitaker, <laughs> some other guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm like those guys are, are bulky, and, and I noticed. I'm like these guys, this guy's the same weight as them. So I wonder if that has something to do with it—the fact that he never well, runs or lifts anything heavy. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely like that body style is is by far the most efficient body style. You look at like the Nick Diaz, Nate Diaz. They're known for their cardio. Same kind of thing, right? They're slim, right? They're not like bulky, but they're also not like flabby. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like it's like a they're just cardio machines. And going into this, I thought if Hermanson can take this fight to the ground, like it's a wrap. Hermanson's so good on the ground, like that's what you have to do to beat Strickland, right? You got to get him down. But lately, Hermanson, I actually picked Hermanson to win this fight, but uh, I, I, I should have known coming in. He's struggled lately on his entries for takedowns mm -hmm. um he really he shoots from a really far he shoots from really far away he doesn't set it up with his punches uh he just kind of reaches grabs you and tries to take you down and he hasn't really been able to get the success that he needs for his takedowns lately yeah and i should have known that that strickland would be able would be able to keep it standing um the, but the big thing is with strickland romero touches on a little bit he's got like most people have one layer of defense right you have to penetrate that one layer strickland the first first step is he's so close, his feet are so close that he can kind of hop back and slide out, right? His legs aren't spread yet. He he mm -hmm. isn't he yeah isn't spread across. He's kind of springed up, ready to do it. Yeah, so he, he doesn't got to so, gather his feet. Yeah, so the first thing you have to penetrate is his evasion backwards. Once you do that, now that he's back and out of range, the guard comes up far out, right? He's framing mm -hmm. these punches, and that that's so discouraging because you, your first couple you're going to whiff because he's he's stepping back. And then the second couple, second flurry, he's going to block out. You have to just keep pressuring him. Like the only way to beat him with that style is to just bully through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do Dude, do it. That, I have such an apt comparison. And Ramiro's going to be laughing in a moment when he reads, when he <laughs> listens to this. And I'll get to that in just a moment. I got like three layers here. So yeah, one, like uh, Ramiro deepest. has a comment that I'm going to read, but I'm not going to give it the dignity of going on screen. He says that he's trained in Miyagi-Do. From, yeah, uh, wax on, wax off. Yeah, wax on, wax off from Cobra Kai. We're not going to put that on screen, but he says less muscle requiring <laughs> oxygen. So, okay, we're going to get that out of the way right now. But you mentioned um, that shooting for takedowns. In some of the other fights I watched earlier in the card tonight and sure elsewhere, I made comments on the fact that some of these other fighters have such amazing uh, shoots for takedowns Entry. from such a far yeah. distance. So they launch exactly with their whole body. About. Just whole body. I was like, man, you're almost laid out. I was like, man, that's wonderful and that's something that i didn't see from hermanson today yeah or when i was like it this morning. um you want to be like a spear yeah exactly exactly and then uh on top of that i'm gonna relate that so i'm wearing the story of the fight merch the shirt right here that we have uh <laughs> that we send out to some of our guests uh like a year street years fighter. past which is great and it's got the street fighter font on there and in games like street fighter there's an element uh, when you're trying to get to your opponent, if they're going to backdash, it's going to beat your strikes that are when you're face up with each other. And to beat the backdash, you have to chase them all the way down. And you have to be looking specifically for that. And if he's not ready, if his camp didn't prepare him for that, you're going to get something like that you saw uh, in this uh, main event, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's similar to like back in the day when Anderson Silva had his reign, when it finally came to an end. The reason he was so successful is because he would he would slip a few punches. You would get discouraged. You'd stop throwing, and he'd counter. He'd rip you. When he finally did get knocked out, he was taunting a little bit, right? But that's what he used to. Always, that's what he always did. It's because Chris Weidman just kept throwing. He didn't get discouraged on the missing, on the whiffing. He just mm. kept throwing, and eventually you'll close that distance. Yeah, and that's what I was looking and for that Hermanson to do, and he just. He kept getting discouraged every time he'd frame his shots. Dude, and that's and, the uh, third thing uh, that I forgot to mm -hmm. mention just now. When you're playing somebody or you're fighting someone, I guess, in real life that has terrific defense, it is discouraging, and it makes you second-guess yeah. even your first attempt. And then, mm -hmm. you know, they just they live off it. They feed off that. Kind of like HLB yeah. Comer's uh, comment right here. Jack mm -hmm. was never winning, uh, Jack Hermanson. His game plan had no plan B, so he had no workaround. 
and then yeah. he hates talking smack and that gets in your head uh in yeah. fighting games and fighting in real life or any competition the guy your that heart can take starts it, racing a little bit he <laughs> says that uh, yep exactly and then uh you it's just another thing for you to think about other than what you're trying to focus on and then he says that sean strickland lives for that shit so uh, yeah. i agree completely man we got a good trifecta going yeah right now <laughs> but uh the viewers <laughs> The other thing, too, is I forgot to mention, it, there, there really is three layers of defense because offense can be defense, too. And, and the first before the evasion is that jab that let that his lead hand was so good the whole night. He really didn't have to throw anything other than the lead hand. Mm-hmm. I mean, you come in, you get you get stopped with a jab. That makes you think twice about coming in. If you if you if you don't get stopped by the jab, he's going to he's going to evade. Right. Moving backwards. And then if you even go through that. He's still going to frame you. So those are those three layers. You have to get past the jab. You have to get past the footwork. Then you have to get past the framing. And most people are just going to give up. And that's kind of, I mean, you don't want to say give up, right? It's not necessarily mm-hmm. giving up, but talk about discouraging. Hermanson, I thought, I did think Hermanson won the first and the fifth round. Um, uh, I'm not sure about not- the fifth round. I definitely wasn't scoring it on my own, but I was admiring how every, at the start of every round, he was really trying to gear up and get a flurry going. Uh, but when that stymied, like that just fed back into the discouragement, uh, a yeah. little bit less tentative and less effective, a little more tentative, less effective. But uh, it was still uh, a little bit inspiring to see, like, this guy's not giving up. And then, at yeah, the end, yeah. But then at the end, when he's like, hit me right in the middle, right in the middle, he's like squaring up uh, with Strickland. Man, yeah. that, was, that was some movie it, stuff. <laughs> it's funny, though, because like Strickland talks all this shit, right, about how he wants to be the first person to like kill someone in the, in the, in the cage and like wow. he's like going in there to kill people and stuff. And then he just like. <laughs> He just evades the whole fight and jabs the whole fight. <laughs> it's like you're, you're trying to kill somebody, somebody with, with your jab. thousand jabs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's oh, funny, man. man. But yeah. also, I love that that he's like pointing at the middle and he's like, he's like, "Come on, hit me, pussy, stand mm-hmm. in the middle." Let's, let's and, he, and as he's moving backwards, yeah, it's like, bro, uh, exactly. <laughs> so funny. I think the guy's classic, but yeah, I don't, I don't think he could probably he probably doesn't get a title shot off of this. He's gonna need to do one more. Maybe against Vittori, I'm not sure, but uh, I'm exci- I'm always excited to see him fight. Yeah, uh, that, that's Ramiro pretty much all I have that for the the, uh, the jab is like a piston. He also commented mm-hmm. that he gave Hermanson the first, and then second through the fifth for Strickland. If you're watching this later on or live, feel free to comment what you thought the rounds were scored as we bring it up. I definitely don't have an opinion. Uh, in this <laughs> extent, so you guys can fill in for me. Uh, please like, subscribe, comment whenever you can. And yeah. did you mention that's all you had for this fight? Other than Sal Diamato gave uh, Hermanson the win. Oh, uh, who was that? <laughs> Sal Diamato. He's one of the judges. Oh, one okay, of the okay, judges okay. gave it. It was a split decision. Oh, he okay, had uh, he had Hermanson winning the first, the third, and the fifth, which is fucking crazy. But mm. it's Sal, Sal Diamato's kind of, if you're not familiar, he, he's kind of like that. <laughs> Classic Sal Ramiro says. But yeah, we yeah. have the uh, next fight coming up, right? Yeah, the co-main. Uh, Will is flexing his shirt towards the screen, and it says, represent, period, Maximov, and then some smaller text that I cannot read. North California, USA. Yeah, so the co-main event. Oh, we're back at the top. (laughs) Oh, dang. It did go to the top. Punahele Soriano versus Nick Maximov. There we go. Going into this one. The UFC is promoting the hell out of their boy Soriano because he was the contender series guy. They really want that to to come through. I think they posted on the Instagram like four times leading up to the fight about his knockout power and all this stuff and, and not one post about Maximov and, and promoting him. And it's like, man, you guys have a co-main event. You, you know, there's two fighters, right? Like mm-hmm. what happens if you throw all your chips into promoting one guy and then he loses? And then <laughs> guess what happened? First round, right? Sorry, uh, Maximov was kind of only throwing the hands just to set up the takedown. It didn't really look like he had much intent to like stand and trade with Soriano, which I probably wouldn't want to either. Soriano hits like a fucking truck, but you could like tell, like, sure. yeah, and you could tell Maximov was just trying to set up the takedown with shots, which is something that Hermanson probably should have been doing, right? Instead of just reaching, you don't want to just bend over at your back and reach for a takedown. You want to either set it up or, like you said, just fucking full layout like a spear Mm -hmm. yeah fish diving upward the up the waterfall but horizontally i guess yeah yeah exactly (laughs) and uh yeah just shoot your takedowns like a fish that's what people are gonna start saying (laughs) (laughs) but but, uh he did a good job on his entries i thought um he he doesn't really have like a power double he kind of just drops he drops to a knee to to get a hold of that leg and then Mm -hmm. he really goes for that single leg and he just stays on you 
and Soriano just could not get him off. I mean, who could uh, power double this guy? This guy looks I like, know, I know right? they're supposed to be the same weight, I guess, but it didn't look like it, that's for sure. Soriano's <laughs> massive. He's a big middleweight. Uh, but he landed some good shots in that first round. There was a moment where uh, it, I think it was like off of a shot, he was coming up and he and he uh, got him in the Muay Thai clinch and, and he ate a knee bad. He ate yeah, it like I got square that on the nose. Huge knee by Soriano. Yeah, punishing yeah. the takedown. That, that was by far the biggest shot of the fight. Um, but then, I mean, Maximo just kind of took it and just carried through with the takedown. Ended up jumping this back. He was on his back for like, a, I think, a minute of the round. Yeah, dude. Uh, uh, I have it on here. He's on his back. Uh, like, what did I say? What did I say? Oh no, that's the, I, I have a comment on, on on what he was like. But when he mounted him, uh, doing the horizontal tango vertically, like the fish I mentioned yeah. earlier. <laughs> here's my question: Does Ramiro's dad go get a beer when they're doing yeah, grappling just, vertically as opposed to yeah. horizontally? Does he get the beer? We have like, to know. on the ground. <laughs> Ramiro, tell your dad to comment in the chat. <laughs> that's what I want to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought I thought the choke was gonna. I thought he was gonna get the choke here when he had. Normally, if someone jumps it back like that, it's it's uh, and and you stay. The longer you stay, the worse it is. Your legs are gonna get on fire, right? Eventually, the neck's gonna open. He had the neck crank for a bit, not quite enough. Um, Romero says, without a doubt, <laughs> still gets a beer. Okay, got it. Still gets That's a the beer. Answer. What are they hugging? Uh, <laughs> But I don't know. This is the round that's that's the hardest to score, in my opinion. Uh, I had Maximo of 29-28. Clearly, there's probably a bias there. But I know there's some people hating on this fight. But the biggest you, – you, you have to score damage first. The, the most damaging strike of the of the fight happened in this round. It was the knee from Soriano. But then there's back control. Back If you take someone's back, it is, it is the most advantageous position you could have. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're on the ground uh, and they're scoring positions – in my opinion, the back should be the highest scoring position you can accomplish in grappling. Um, so it's tough. You have back control versus one knee is basically the two deciding uh, factors of this round. At the end of the day, though, um, the second and third was just complete dominance by Maximov. He just, yeah, I mean, uh, he, the comment him, I alluded to him. earlier was when he was on his back and he leaned against the fence a little bit to try and relieve some of the weight. And they mm-hmm. recommend that he gets uh, Maximov's back to the fence to scrape yeah. him off. I was like, scrape him off like moss. He's like moss on the back of the yeah. tree right now. <laughs> moss on the back yeah. of the tree. What do you think yeah. of uh, Ramiro's comment here where he says he would have loved to see Maximov mix it up more? He means mix mm-hmm. it up with more strikes. Uh, the specialist fighters are slowly dying. And even those that have thrived, uh, a la this guy named Damian Maya, they could this only guy. go so far. So what do you think about that? No, it's true. I think it's one of those things where um... – you have a game plan, right? And if the game plan is working, like HW Comer said about Jack not having a, a plan B, Maximov didn't need the plan B in this one. You stick with plan A if it's working, right? Um, yeah, that's from the knee right there. Uh, plan A was working. Plan A worked for him, right? He didn't need to, to separate. Ma- uh, Soriano's, Soriano's um, easiest path to victory is standing and trading with Maximov. So if I'm Maximov, I'm not even giving him the opportunity you know what I mean? Um, I think he, uh, officially he landed 11 takedowns in mm-hmm. three rounds. I mean, that's a lot. Yeah. Why stop doing that? You know, mm-hmm. if that's working, go for it. Um, and, and I know, I know people are going to, I know people are talking shit about the lay and pray. This is the shot of Soriano. I think probably tearing something in his knee. Um, but yeah, sometimes you gotta, you gotta go through it. You gotta, it might not be the most exciting fight. He even said it, he knows it wasn't the most exciting fight, but you got to get the win. He's still now he's undefeated. Still, you know, he's uh, I mean, I can see why it, for some spectators, it's definitely not uh, as exhilarating to watch. But mm. when I'm watching, I'm trying to imagine the times you've wrestled with your family. Everyone's wrestled with their family members at least if <laughs> yeah. they haven't actually rolled on the ground <laughs> doing jujitsu or anything like that. But just doing that tires you out so immensely. So mm. it's just like when you're tr- even with lay and pray. Uh, when they're getting you down and wrestling you down, it's like somebody is grinding. It, it is somebody yeah. grinding their entire body against you, and you're fighting it with every fiber of your being. So that's going to yeah. gas you. That's why they say it, that their endurance is going to go down when that happens. And when I think about that, uh, it keeps me from thinking that this is boring or whatever like that. So, hey, I'm a casual, man. And I still thought it was, uh, it was enticing. That doesn't watch. sound like so, casual. So that's maybe uh... these uh, – oh, I'm pretty casual. I promise. But these <laughs> people that say that it's not exciting – 
maybe they're casual, even though they wear they watch more fights than I do. I think too, coming off of a fight like uh yeah, look at Maximov. Hey, how about Maximov sounds exactly like Nick Diaz now? Spending so much time with those guys that he just talks exactly <laughs> like him. It's so funny. Oh, I didn't know they uh, trained together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's part of the that's why Nate was there. Um mm. and uh coming off of this card up until uh this point was was pretty spectacular as far as like action goes so i think this was like the contrast of this compared to what has what was leading up to this fight it makes it even more like boring for people right but yeah i thought uh maximum i mean what a completely dominant performance there's some people saying that soriano should have won uh because damage scores first but really the only thing of significance that he landed was the knee i mean the hammer the fist looked round. pretty vicious i have some hammer fists True. down here yeah he he does have some he did have some uh, good body shots from the top right well while, mm-hmm. while Maximov is in on the takedown but yeah round three ultimately I mean you get taken down eleven times you better be doing a lot of damage to to offset that on the scorecards but yeah I was happy for Maximov that's my boy I represent <laughs> yeah well, congrats <laughs> to him uh, yeah. do you want to move on to the next yeah. one yeah this one is one that I've been waiting for for a very long time. Sakvat Rachmanov versus Carlston Harris. Rachmanov, I think, will be a champ. I've been saying this for a long time. Me and Ramiro have been in on this dude for a very long time. He's also now still undefeated. I think he came into this one 14 0. Now he's 15 0. Uh, yeah, 15 0 now. Uh, the guy, I mean, like, like they said, the guy looks like he's in there. He just woke up. He just, the complete, like, I mean, he just you're talking like, about another day in the office. Yeah, yeah, another day in the office. He's just kind of there to do his business and leave. And uh, Harris had a hard time finding him. You know, in that first. Well, that and, first and before minute. we talk about the the outcome or how the rounds went, I just wanted to say the very first note I have on here is that Harris had the craziest hand movement that I could remember of, of all the fights. It was like, yeah. oh, high guard, high guard. Oh, watch the face, watch the face. Jab, jab. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Like, I'm not very far off with what I'm doing right now. <laughs> no, yeah, it was very – when I was watching it, it kind of looked like, okay, this is already the beginning of the end because Harris was just so much don't get close to me mm-hmm. and just so, like, um, like worried about what Rachmanov is about to do. Was he trying just to frantic. bamboozle him? Does he does he guard that way every time he fights? Like, tell me more. I mean, kind of, he is a high energy guy, right? But I think it's more of throwing a lot of feints to try to to try to freeze Rachmanov and just mm-hmm. not let him come in. And it was just Rachmanov was just like he said. He looks like he just woke up and he's just kind of like, all right, you're doing that, cool. <laughs> my initial my initial you. thought. Okay, one full disclosure. I had the fighter names backwards. I didn't look at the trunks designators, and I was like, oh, okay, Rachmanov. I thought he was the hand movement guy at first, and yeah. I had to swap the names. <laughs> but secondly, uh, I, I didn't I didn't think you said he looks like he just woke up. I wasn't thoroughly impressed. I didn't have any hype. I didn't know anything about this guy wa- watching, and I just saw a couple <laughs> spinning spinning kicks, and I was like, okay, I wonder if those are gonna land. Those don't usually land usually when you land. go for them yeah. kind of raw it's usually when yeah. someone mixes it into their normal you, you know set it up yeah exactly exactly you got to get their attention away and then it landed and i was like man i guess this guys are pretty good and then i got the names right and here we are <laughs> yeah <laughs> dude so yeah like i mean normally you don't land that if you just throw it naked right mm-hmm. you have to set it up with something not rocking off i mean the guy you could tell just from the first minute of the fight that his understanding of distance is so high level because you have Harris just doing all this crazy shit, right? And Rachmanov is just hop back, yeah. hop in, hop back. And there was a moment where Harris threw something heavy. Rock, Rachmanov was just slightly out of range. He's in range. He lands a shot and then he's out again. And he did it so effortless <laughs> that, that, I mean, the guy's like, he, I really think he's going to be fighting for the belt with, with maybe not this year because the, the, the welterweight division is so stagnant, but, mm-hmm. uh, before the end of next year, he's definitely going to at least challenge for the belt. What are you laughing and, at? And how, uh, I'm laughing uh, at Romero's comment here. He said that yeah. my my impression of uh, of Harris was pretty good, so uh, yeah. I'll keep it up. Maybe I'll I'll bring it up next time in the future. Um, I don't have very many notes on this because how long did it take for this round to end or for this fight to end? Uh, it looks like 50 seconds. Oh, well, maybe Why? not. E- either 50 seconds or four. No, minutes I think there was 50 seconds left in the first round. I think. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was near that the end of the first right. round. So. Um, 
the the shots that uh Rachmanov landed to to finish the fight can you go back to that picture of him standing over harris yeah let me go back one and then go back uh apologize for any delays in any of the graphical presentation to the viewers it's a little tough to host it's it tough to at the time but we're doing our best is this the right one <laughs> yeah. that's the one yeah so okay. he drops him with the wheel kick right it, he wasn't he wasn't like unconscious. He yeah, is that what I wrote down as the somersault takedown? Is that the wheel kick you're you're talking about? <laughs> <laughs> the wheel kick that Rachmanov landed caught him with like the calf, right? Oh, okay. It wasn't, okay. With, yes, it yes, wasn't yes. with the heel, right? It dropped him, but he wasn't like unconscious. He was still present, right? And then Rachmanov just walks over to him and Yeah, kind of slowly. Harris, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> terrifying. And Harris is, <laughs> is like doing his best for up kicks. He's trying to block mm-hmm. shit and he's kind of kicking his legs up and down. Rachmanov just grabs his legs and just tosses them to the side. <laughs> he steps over to the side and he just he lands like three shots that were just so perfect. Romero mm-hmm. talks about a piston. Uh, Strickland's jabbing a piston. Dude, he lands three right hands just straight down the pipe. And it was just like, just each one, you, you hold, the whole body kind of bounces. Mm-hmm. And it was like, he almost threw another one. And Beltran got well, yeah. He walked away it. without uh, yeah. it even being called yet. I think yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. yeah. What the hell? And like, you know, uh, bear with me, but I think everyone in the world has played Smash Bros before, and so yeah. uh, in Smash Bros, there's a very very famous tournament moment where this guy just walks forward, like it's tournament high level, best guys in the world. They're on the stage. It's high stakes. He walks up very slowly, easy to guard or avoid, and just does forward smash like as though it was like a party game with your with your mom, and they don't know what to do. Yeah. And it, it hurt. And then the commentary says, "Did he just walk up slowly and forward smash? Did he just walk up slowly and hit this dude three times on the face and move his legs to the yeah. side and walk away without waiting for the for the submission or TKO to be called? Dude, just Wild. complete disdain. Just I mean, he walks him down. He evades everything. Lands a wheel kick. Tosses his legs to the side. Pistons him a couple times and walks away. I mean, it was yeah, just. With- with this new context, I need to rewatch this and and, and more <laughs> further admire. I know who he is. Yeah. I know which one he is. I can't. Dude, wait. he's gonna be a big <laughs> star. He's gonna be big. I mean, he didn't really have to showcase much in this fight as far as what his tools are that he has. But I mean, the guy is so well rounded. His grappling. I mean, he did have that. He did have the judo toss. That's probably what you're talking about. The the somersault takedown. Yeah, he somersault takedown. <laughs> that shit was beautiful. Not much control after it, but. Uh, Everybody's super high on Kamzat Kimaev, right? Same division. This guy's coming through. He's out. He's grappling the hell out of people. He's smashing people. Mm-hmm. Rocklinav has been doing the same thing. He just doesn't have that loud persona that Kamzat has. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's not as like in your face about everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, but dude, the guy is still. I think eventually we will see Kamzat versus Rachmanov, and it's going to be fucking crazy. It's going to be some God of War shit. I hope and so. I'll- you think he'll wake up? You think he'll be like yeah. energized in the <laughs> beginning? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, that's pretty much all I have for this one. How about you? No, that was another short one. Not many notes because it ended so quickly. So that's all I yeah. got too. But I'm excited to rewatch it. It was short enough. I will definitely rewatch. Yeah. And if you can, go back and watch the rest of this dude's fights because he's a fucking animal. Uh, all right. So before that, we had Brendan Allen versus Sam, Smiling Sam Alvey. Okay. This one made me laugh. And I don't mean to, <laughs> to tear into your intro, but the fights before this one were some, you know, Kind of hard hitting, uh, bloody, uh, chiseled men kind of going yeah. at it. They were yelling, you know, like yeah. I got some more Street Fighter comparisons <gasps> ready for you guys in a moment. Yeah. Uh, but then when you <laughs> brought this fight in, and these guys are probably a higher weight class than the other ones, but yeah. they're a little less toned. One has a farmer's tan, like, you know, <laughs> a really good one. Uh, the other guy is wearing white shorts with white, like, ankle kind of wraps. So it looked yeah. like underwear and socks, and I was so yeah. unthreatened. Like I, I'm no, I'm not in the ring, but like I'm like, man, is this gonna be vicious? Like, what am I seeing? This guy is smiling. Like I don't yeah. know. I was, I, I was un- unenthused him. the whole way around. So some context. Sam uh, yeah, Sam Alvey like and uh, and yeah, Brendan, Brendan Allen. Allen, and I've got the pics right here. Here we go. Yeah, Sam Alvey's been doing this a long time, a long, long time. <laughs> And this picture uh, so looks tougher than he looks like at normal yeah. stance. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so, so he's he's definitely past his prime. He mm. he tied a record. Um, he either tied it or broke it. I think he tied it um, for longest uh, longest streak without a win. Wow! Uh, it's now been eight fights since he last won. He's uh, seven. Is he like the is he like the first guy in Punch Out? 
yeah, you fight Glass Joe. Is this him? Yeah, kind of. Oh, uh, dude hits like a truck still. Um, mm. The problem is, in that first round, he landed on Allen a couple times. And and I, I just want to defend Allen real quick, too. Mm-hmm. Normally, he doesn't look like that physique-wise. I think he took this fight like six days before the fight mm-hmm. uh, on short notice. He stepped in for an injured uh, opponent. And this isn't his weight class. He normally fights at a weight class below this. Okay. So this, this is him like out of camp, just like getting off the couch and whooping some ass but uh <laughs> but alvi he's he's always done this um early in his career he had a lot of success with his check right hook uh so you come in he steps to the side he lands the hook over the top and he's and he's slept people with it he hits hard mm-hmm. as hell mm-hmm. um but because of all the success that he's had with that he kind of just invites you in so he mm-hmm. spends entire fights with his, his back against the fence hoping you come in and then he tries to time you as you come in and then he backs mm-hmm. up and then you come in, tries to time you. And he landed a couple times in that first round. Um, and, Al, I mean, Allen didn't have – probably had zero sparring for this fight. So he's, I mean, not sharp coming into this. But second round, uh, Allen just kind of lights him up, <laughs> drops him, runs at him, uh, and then just chokes him out. <laughs> he didn't even have to take his back fully to get the choke in. Mm. Uh, he's kind of off to the side with the rear naked choke right in front of Alvy's corner, which his coach is his wife. So that's got to be tough. Huh. Uh, his coach his coach actually or his coach his coach and his wife actually won uh she's actually really good too she knows she knows okay shit. i was gonna ask do you say that's tough because his wife has to watch and also be his coach or is it tough because it's not effective but you're saying it's effective yeah it's effective it's tough because she has to sit there and watch her husband get fucking right, rocked right, 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 right. And then choked out. but she actually won uh america's uh next top model remember that show with like tyra yeah banks? tyra banks is a monster yes yeah. she like she could win some fights just looking at you with those yeah. with those eyes they're electric yeah but uh yeah <laughs> sam alvey's wife won i think a season of that um really but yeah she knows her shit she's a good coach alvey i mean he's just past his prime he's over the hill he was never like an elite guy anyways and mm-hmm. he's just kind of past his prime probably should have been cut a long time ago people are kind of pissed that he's even still in the mix but i mean he's anti-union so i think the ufc just loves him you know mm. okay 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 but yeah he- and uh i guess to contribute my end i'll just read out some of the highlights from my notes uh yeah <laughs> uh, so the spinning heel kick by lv and the spinning back fist i don't think did either of those land like it was it was a nice flurry of movement but it, it looked nice yeah. uh the announcers it. They played their podcast during this episode. <laughs> that was like their yeah. one grievance or whatever <laughs> that, that I have against them. But I was like, okay, whatever. You do what you got to do. By the way, Story of the Fight can be found on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, <laughs> Google Podcast, Anchor.fm. Anywhere podcasts are sold, please like and subscribe on YouTube if you can. That would be really appreciated. Uh, and then the last uh, note that I have, other than the explosion in the barrage, is that uh, Alan wobbles Alvy and then snakes in for a submission. Was that a rear naked choke? It's, yeah, it's technically a rear naked choke. Uh, well, it, it is. It's a rear and naked choke. I described choke. it by pouncing yeah. on him like a spider monkey is what I wrote in the notes here. That works. <laughs> that works. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, man. I mean, <clears throat> Alvy's a character, man. People hate him because of his losses and stuff. But the re- reality is, like, I still enjoy his fights. I think he's probably a good dude. He's got mm-hmm. a character, you know. When he when they first took away sponsors, uh, mm-hmm. he he put, like, he he went to like a tanning salon and had like stencils put on him for sponsors. Oh yeah, sponsors onto his body, mm-hmm. and then they're like, "All right, none of that either." But he got away <laughs> with it. I think he got fined, but <laughs> yeah, no way. Cool. That's like yeah, girls do that. They go to the tanning salon and they put a little heart on him. So he did that with yeah, sponsors. Yeah. It said, yeah. "What did it say?" Like a body armor on his arm. Yeah, in, in his armor. Skin. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what it was, but Man, yeah. nice. <laughs> no, hey, I, I don't, I don't, I enjoy him. Um, I think he's now. <laughs> 11 12 and 1 in his UFC career. Wow, he's losing a record yeah. now. Yeah, not good. He is like Glass Joe. Okay. Yeah, kind of. Hmm. <laughs> but yeah, props to Brandon Allen uh, and props to Sam Alvey for taking a fight on short notice. That people always give props to the guy who steps up and and enters a fight on short notice, which they deserve it. But the opponent deserves it too because now they're facing a completely new opponent than they had yeah. trained for. Mm-hmm. Um so I, I props to both guys. I don't know. Yeah, I don't that's, wanna... that's very fair and something that you don't really hear like you said. Mm-hmm. um but yeah that's all i got i read you the notes so yeah not not much on that one <laughs> <laughs> it was a refreshing uh you know gulp of water between the previous fights and yeah. then the last the final one the final ones. yeah those are always good to have <laughs> so before that we have the actual ultimate fighter season finale in brian battle versus Trishon gore um 
the best uh, names in fighting against each other. Probably the best. Yeah, name I was thinking about that gore. Like, man, a bull gores you. That's vicious, you know. Gore versus uh, battle. Like, what the fuck? Uh, Katie looked up uh, and and saw like the, uh, you know, it's, it has the clock and then it has like gore battle the names, like, on the bottom uh, right and the rounds. Yeah. She's like, are those their actual names? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> nice, Fucking crazy. Uh, but yeah, so this is a picture right of the Ultimate Fighter, the reality show, the tournament. Mm-hmm. This was supposed to be the finale of the oh, season. Can you tell someone, or can you tell me, a layman, what I know about the Ultimate Fighter, but what is the Contender Series that you mentioned earlier? Is that also a TV show? So yeah, so the Contender Series is something that they do now on ESPN, where they just have guys from like regional scenes or other organizations come in and try to like, it's a it's a fight card basically mm-hmm. that these guys are trying to they're trying Make to fight it onto the main cards. Yeah, they're trying to fight for it. They're not even on. They're not even in the UFC. Mm-hmm. It's like um. Yeah, it's like a showcase almost. And then if Dana likes your performance, he'll hand out a contract. There's a lot of guys who have been coming from the Contender Series lately. Um, they're really trying to push that for like prospects and stuff. Um, but this one, they came from the Ultimate Fighter, right? So they're in the house. They do the whole tournament, coaches. Um, this was supposed to be the finale. Uh, and Gore got injured in between the filming of the show versus uh, – the finale mm. take place right so got they had it, it. They had that gore knocked out mm-hmm. filled in for gore uh in the finale and brian mm-hmm. battle won uh so he won the season he got the trophy he got the six figure contract all this stuff right there's been a lot of people who were like trashawn gore would have beat him in the finale like mm-hmm. he like he's not the true winner a lot of people they have that caveat on him right not mm-hmm. not brian battle's fault um i actually really really like brian battle he seems like a good dude he was also he was also picked last on the mm-hmm. season the draft he was he was the last pick um so now this fight finally happens it's like it's like brand battle had to fight two finales basically wow um, yeah so going into this everyone's like oh and i i picked gore in this one too if i'm being honest but first round brian battle froze him i think i would have picked him. gore uh if after watching and, and thinking about it without having watched it before like i would have picked him as well yeah so, He's terrifying. No fault. He yeah. hits like a truck. <laughs> First round, he was completely frozen, though. Uh, Brian Battles, I mean, fantastic round from Battle in that in that, that to start the fight. I think he, uh, I think Gore landed 15 strikes uh, in that first round. I think Brian Battle landed like 50. And uh, it didn't seem like it was 15 strikes. Uh, Battle himself said less at, at the yeah, after the in between rounds. He's like, you took one shot. It didn't even hurt. And he's probably said yeah. it more colorfully and more forcefully. But that was like, kind of crazy. I, was it Herb Dean that was refing that just like uh, just yeah, it was Herb Dean yeah, at the end Herb of the round, one. right? Gore really only threw a couple times. It seems like he didn't like you said, didn't seem like he landed 15 strikes, maybe leg mm-hmm. kicks and stuff like that. But it was really just Brian Battle jabbing him, kicking him to the body, kicking him to the legs all around. He landed 50 strikes in that first round. And then at the end and of the he round, had a, he had an exclamation exclamation on every strike. Ha, yeah. Hoo, ha, yeah. Hoo, ha, ha. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> every yeah. single time. And so if yeah. you play Street Fighter 2, there's a character named Fei Long. Wah, wah, yeah, wah. yeah. And so I wrote Fei Long in my notes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I wrote the crow in mine. But uh, <laughs> at the end of the fight, he looked like the crow. But um, at the end of the round, Brian, and they, they, they're they they're kind of friendly, right? They're friendly friendly banner between the two mm-hmm. at the end of that first round brian battles talking shit like you said saying one you only hit me once didn't even hurt mm-hmm. and herb just kind of let him walk across the cage to him mm-hmm. and it's like dude you that's realize that, happen, wasn't the, right? that wasn't the end of the fight they're supposed to keep them completely separate in between mm-hmm. rounds like that's not supposed to happen uh but i mean they're jawing at each other and stuff like that second round i gave that to i gave that to gore i had gore winning that second round he clipped him a couple times that left hand yeah he's loading up a cannon that's what i have yeah yeah. yeah, I mean, he just walks you down, uh, and he. I, I think after that first round, he he realized like, hey, I gotta fucking do something. I yeah, there's only three there rounds. Yeah, I've part. already lost <laughs> one third of the rounds here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I basically have to either finish him or win the next two. Um, and uh, yeah, he landed that left hook a couple times in that second in the second round. Um, but Battle did a great job of clinching every time he got caught with it because you'd see him kind of buckle like it was it was doing the damage. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he clinch, circle out, uh, lean on him for the takedown a couple times, uh, just kind of smother him, survive that round. Mm-hmm. Like I said, gave it to Gore, but the third round w- again was kind of all battle. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's that hook. I mean, completely turned him around. <laughs> oh, sorry. If you guys hear my cat in the background, 
Uh, I apologize. <laughs> She's meowing. Yeah. She needs some food. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much all as far as like the fight goes. Uh, Battle just man, what what a tremendous improvement from the last time we've seen him. His last fight was the finale, uh, and I think after winning the show, getting more training, he looked like the best shape I've ever seen him in. He looked ripped. Uh, yeah, looking like the crow. Uh, dude his eye was so bloody yeah. and so blackened it was crazy and when you combine that with how his hair kind of came loose like i have long yeah. hair myself and i can only imagine having your eye obscured by by blows but also not tying it yeah in a better like in a, in a time where strikes can come from anywhere like i, I cannot know. imagine that and i'm especially when you have to for effect yeah and especially when you have to when you, when you have to watch for that left hook and that's what's doing the damage to your eye and now you can't see the left hook coming uh, the fact that he he could come back and win that third round. Normally, if you win the first but lose the second, it's really hard to shift the momentum back and take the mm. third round. It's hard to split like that. Um, but he did a great job, I thought. Uh, he looked really good. And then he brought the trophy out at the end of the fight. Did you oh, see that? yeah. I was like, where did that come from? Yeah, he brought that shit. Imagine if he, if he lost, he would have given it to him. I don't know. but uh, uh, I don't know if you heard the interview afterward, but Romero says that he said, who needs another eye? Uh, yeah, yeah. That'll classic. Start. Yeah. <laughs> Because Bisping's asking him about it. He's like, yeah, who who needs that? Who needs two eyes? And Bisping's yeah. like, tell me about it. <laughs> I don't know if you know, but Bisping has a fake eye. Oh, I was I was gathering it from what you said, but that's funny. That's okay, on yeah. point too. Nice. Bis- Bisping, uh, he got wheel kicked by – or was it wheel kicked? He got knocked out by maybe a high kick by uh, Vitor Belfort. And it he lost an eye his, in the octagon? Tore his retina. Uh, wow. And the doctors told him, we can, we can fix it with surgery, but – you'll have to stop fighting. Like you won't be able to fight post-surgery. Hmm. And so he kept that shit a secret from the UFC. And wow. Just, and like somehow passed like all the physicals and stuff like that with it, kept that shit a secret and then became a champion with one eye, no death perception. This means, this means fucking awesome, dude. What a legend. That's but, crazy. Uh, and, he, and I like his commentary too. Yeah. He's great because he's, he's really technical and he mm-hmm. kind of surprises you with how technical he is because he's such like a jokester and he like talks so much shit. Mm-hmm. That like every once in a while he'll drop some knowledge and you're like, oh yeah, he's a fucking champion. Like, <laughs> he's I, I love Bisping. I think he's he's one of the best. Um, yeah, that's wild and and it's such a nice refreshing comparison to all the NBA coverage that I watch because mm-hmm. they'll just throw Shaq onto anything and I know you know who Shaquille O'Neal is. Yeah. That guy is terrible on commentary. <laughs> like he just mumbles all the time. He talks about yeah. domination and like a more modern player, Candace Parker from the WNBA talks to him about how skilled big men are now and he's like they can't dominate and she's like well it's not the same as when you play because xyz and he's yeah. like well why isn't it just like it wasn't my day and he she literally put him on the spot uh, yeah. for not having it all together when you compare it to the guys that i listen to and then or to the guys that we heard on these on this broadcast today and that you guys have in the, in the ufc that we have in the ufc um mm. versus uh that and then you get the little uh clips of audio from the corners and at the apex you can hear them way more clearly yeah than you can at the other arenas t-mobile arena but also it reminds me of when it was uh you know fight island and during the pandemic when you just heard every single slap but yeah it was it's crazy. nice hearing the raw commentary because in the nba like they'll have inside segments where you hear the coaches talking but that audio has to get screened by the pr person for the team so uh, all you get is like Go a job, bullshit. intensity, you know, that's, that's, that's it. That's all you get. Yeah. As opposed to like Sean Strickland's like his coach is saying, yeah, man, go stand over there. Look sexy. Let him see you. But yeah. You're not phased yeah. by these attacks. You know what I mean? One so thing that I want. That. Yeah. One thing I wanted to say to you, I forgot to say it, but in the Strickland fight, he's notorious for like kicking his coaches out of the cage in between rounds and just standing there ready to go and just talking wow. shit across the cage. Right. <laughs> that's awesome. And, uh, there was one moment, I think it was like the end of the third, Eric Nixick is his coach, and uh, one of his other coaches was like, you can hear him in the back, and like, tell him something, blah, 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 blah. And then Nixick's like, I, he doesn't let me tell him shit, or some, something like that. <laughs> I was like, fucking oh, wow. classic. Dude. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, <laughs> that, And then I have one more comment. And the first uh, part of the fight that I watched today, they let the guys in the cage, and they latched the cage i did not see a lock on this cage yeah <laughs> ramiro always says they're locked in the cage i don't know if that's true is that true yeah it's not no there's no lock yeah, okay ramiro i feel lied to and the integrity of the show may be in question <laughs> i expect a full retraction and apology on the next episode that the champ yeah. the champ comes back the champ, and, and champ you guys should, should uh want this too so let's hear it in the chat apology yeah. from ramiro 
Yeah, Ramiro's a lot like uh, he'll like this. He's a lot like John Jones right now, where it's like <laughs> where like John Jones he he he's out because he's testing positive for steroids. He's getting caught with cocaine. He's hitting a pregnant woman with his car. He's the champion and he's gone. And then all of a sudden, DC's out there fighting with the real belt for with Gustafson and all this stuff while while Jones is out there doing his hoodlum shit mm-hmm. and. John Jones is tweeting about how they suck in the cage. Yeah, it's like, dude, you're exactly. not even here, dude. And that's Ramiro right now. Ramiro's a yeah, lot like said, John Jones. And now he's walking it back. He says, hey, man, it's a saying. It's, it's a, a saying. saying. Yeah, and it's Ramiro, hyperbole. You, you can't just be chatting with us in the comments right now. You got to show up on the show. So we'll see you next week. Get ready. Get trained. Paper champ. <laughs> uh, should we get to the next fight? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Brian, Brian Battle. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan. <laughs> Oh, for sure. Uh, and right. I think this Fight is going to be this. a very juicy one. Yeah, no pun intended. I hope you guys uh, like long episodes. We're at 50 minutes already, <laughs> and we're going to keep on going, damn it. Yeah, keep this train <laughs> rolling. Uh, speaking of juicy, we had Julian Juicy J. Arosa versus Steven Peterson. Holy Jesus. shit. Yeah, this uh, shit was wild. I, I <laughs> Rocky three is what I, is what I put on this. <laughs> Dude, this is, uh, in my opinion... Uh, takes over Cater versus um, Chikadze as fight of the year so far. We're just in February, right? But we got to track it. Uh, they raised the bar, in my opinion. This is the bar you have to meet to to take fight of the year. Um, first round, I rewatched it almost instantly. Uh, as soon as the B- Brian Battle fight ended, uh, my brother Brian uh, came over and we went back and uh, and watched this fight because he had missed it. Uh, Omar, shout out Omar, chiming in. Arosa, a dog. This was a textbook Arosa fight. The guy, if you don't put him out early, good luck. You're not ever going to put him out if you don't do it in the first round. Mm. And the first round was a lot of kind of feeling out. Uh, Arosa picking him apart from the outside up until that last the last 30 seconds. Arosa clipped him like four or five times to end the round. And it was like, ooh, well, exclamation point on the round from Arosa. Looking good. Second uh, round. Yeah, and like he doesn't strike me just looking at the two fighters as like when he's walking around the ring he doesn't look wild he doesn't look like he has a lot of power like but a fucking when savage it, when it yeah he doesn't look like a fucking crazy man and they mentioned yeah. it in a in a, one of the other fights i think or no it was this fight where he's like that guy's psycho just like you <laughs> okay yeah so, so go whoop his ass so yeah. i was like is he psycho is he and then, and then you find out <laughs> and then the second round starts and and <laughs> yeah, yeah omar shout out uh Y'all selling tickets for the sock by hype train? Yes. Have been for a long time. Very excited to see him continue his thing. Um, but Juicy J, that second round had to do oh, with and I, I'm looking at that note right there. What is that describing? I know there's an artist named Juicy J, but I don't think that oh, guy yeah. is an artist. I don't <laughs> no, think you can describe his, his, his shots as Juicy. What yeah. Juicy will? Please explain to me. Juicy, who knows? Maybe it was uh, Steven Peterson's face by the end of the fight. Oh, but... okay, yeah. Lots of juice. But lots Cuban of juice. juice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but that second round, Peterson was landing that right hand over and over and over again and mm-hmm. had Arosa in the whole fight. all sorts of trouble. That second round, he rocked him like three or four times, and Arosa was just – he has kind of a Carlos Condit style. I don't. I know you probably don't get that reference, but mm. the way his posture is, Shane Burgos, Carlos Condit, well, give me, a, back, give me, a, yeah, give me an imitation right here. Show me. We're yeah, the video like, show. He's kind of like this, right, with his shoulders see, forward. Hold on, hold on. Show us all. Yeah, we're gonna do this right here. But yeah, he's got his shoulders forward, right? He's hunched and he kind of hops to the side. He's a lot of angles, like a goblin, mm-hmm. right? And that's kind of how Carlos <laughs> Condit was. Okay. And Shane Burgos is the same way. And that was Juicy J this time. He's he's angling in and out, but Peterson's still meeting him with that right hand. And he rocked him. He hit him like four or five times in a row. And I was like, mm-hmm. holy shit, because Arosa has been put out before, and mm-hmm. and and not just once. So it's like, I mean, it's not like he's got like the granite chin that some guys have, Mm -hmm. but he just kept eating these shots. And then while he's getting fucked up in that second round, he fucking spins, Mm, lands the spinning back fist and drops him. Yeah, that shit was fucking crazy. (laughs) Yeah, Peterson pops pops right back up. I mean, the guy's a savage too. Um, What a fucking war. I had Peterson winning that second round, but then the third round, Arosa just put it to him. And I mean, it, it was back and forth, right? It wasn't like a one-sided round. Yeah, and like one well, to talk about what you mentioned right now with the back fist. I wrote, "Arosa or Julian Arosa looks comically wide open until yeah. he, until he gets the back down. fist himself, and that sits down Peterson. So yeah, man, a wobbly takedown. It was just, uh, it was crazy. Yeah, it was, it was <laughs> nuts, man. And that in that third round, 
Uh, I think the takedowns kind of stole it for Arosa. He got the takedowns into the guillotine. Peterson was going on that guillotine, but I mean, at that point, they're so sweaty in the third round, and and he had his lip split, completely mm-hmm. split right here. Uh, mm-hmm. It gained an extra inch on his mouth, and uh, the blood's like leaking right into the choke, and it's like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, 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 it was, right it was out. too slippery, too <laughs> yeah. much, uh, too much, too much saliva, <laughs> too, yeah, too much juice, exactly, juicy J. Yeah. That's what you meant, huh? <laughs> yeah, and uh, man, I mean, at the end of the fight, Peterson looked like a different person, man. Just wearing, he looked like Captain Redbeard, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and he wasn't there, walking forward super confidently in the first round. He uh, Arosa had him going around the sides of the cage often. They mentioned I mean, that, Arosa was picking him apart in that first round. Yeah, and like uh, I've heard you guys mention before that the apex is smaller than the other cages. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that's smaller than where he's fought before. He's and never I think fought it was the apex. His first time in the apex, yeah. And then yeah. you know, in the second round and the third round, he's 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 like un he's unhinged himself. He's un, he's loosened up and he's walking straight up to Arosa yeah. at that point. <laughs> Dude, it, it was a crazy fight, man. And and uh, there was a lot of shit talking before this fight. Like, a lot. Uh, Arosa was talking a mad shit. Peterson missed weight. So he's calling, he's an unprofessional, right? All this crazy shit. You hate to see mm. it. Someone misses weight, especially when they have a full Because they don't camp, get the right? payout is what I heard on the uh Well, if you get a bonus, but you missed weight, that bonus goes to your opponent. Wow. Uh, and usually, the only bonus you can technically get is... Is fight a fight of the night. of the night if you missed weight, right? Because if you get a knockout, they're not going to give you a performance of the night and then give mm. it to the dude you knocked out. But, mm. um, but yeah, so Juicy J gets an extra 100K on this fight. He gets wow. his show money, his win money, his 50 grand, and Peterson's 50 grand. Uh, and that's why you make weight. But dude, they're going to have a Rocky fucking Rocky II <laughs> Apollo Creed grudge match that we're not going to see know, yeah. for that 50 grand. Dude, they have yeah. to. But then you love to see it at the end of this fight. Okay, yeah, before I say the end of the fight. Mm-hmm. The last minute of this fight, all of a sudden, Juicy J lands like a one-two, a good one, a flush mm-hmm. one, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Let's go, baby!" Yeah, and that's that. stays on him, and he's like, "Fucking!" <laughs> he's like screaming shit, <laughs> dude. Yeah, that's where I typed Rocky Three. I was because yeah. have you seen Rocky Three? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, if our viewers <laughs> haven't seen it, he's fighting Mr. T, known as Clubber yeah. Lang, and Clubber Lang is <laughs> fucking hitting him so much power, knocking Rocky off his feet. Oh, and look, making him look like a goblin. And then finally, he starts taking more shots. And he's like, this man's crazy. Everyone's like, Rocky's crazy. And Rocky's like, come on, hit me. Hit me. You ain't so bad. That's what that's yeah. what Julian Arosa reminded me of right there. Yeah, dude. So. And it was classic, too, because it was perfect the way he set up the takedown with a minute left in, the, in that round, too, because that's usually how you seal the deal, right? A hey, shout out to Tony What's with up, the Tony? new job. That's my boy. Uh, <laughs> and Juicy J, you, what you want to do in a close round especially – is you want to close it with the takedown because that's like your final stamp, last impression. Mm-hmm. It was a close round. Who could be a toss up, but then you got a takedown at the end and you get it. And he screams, he screams some shit to get him all hyped. And as soon as Peterson tries to hit him after screaming, he just shoots with that double leg and gets it. And it was mm-hmm. like, because you, if you're in a war like that and some dude screams like that, you think he's about to start throwing shots. Yeah. So you're about to throw some <laughs> shots back and he just <laughs> drops under for the takedown. Okay. It was classic. But that's how you bury the hatchet. Is a fight like that? Oh, there's that would do. Thanks. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that's how you bury the hatchet, right? You have a war like that. You miss weight, bunch of shit talking. A fight like that can earn the respect back. You know what I mean? Uh, going into this fight, everybody's talking a bunch of shit about Peterson for missing weight. Um, but by the end of the fight, I mean, how can you, how can you talk shit? The dude mm-hmm. showed up. I mean, the split lip, the gash on the side of his head. Uh. And then he loses that extra 50 grand. He doesn't get his win money. It's a fucking tough sport, dude. It's a fucking Wild. tough sport. <laughs> that was I a crazy fight. Make it. Mm-hmm. That was a fucking crazy fight. Well, yeah, that's how I felt after that fight. I was like, yeah. God damn, we need a breather after that. Uh, shout out Juicy J. He's oh, always been one of my favorites. There was a cartwheel kick <laughs> at the end. <laughs> Not a cartwheel kick. No. A what rolling was thunder. Rolling. Oh, thought. it's way cooler. It and it landed. Yeah, did it? That's what I couldn't tell. I, I replayed it like twice, and I was like, "Did that land?" It landed, and by Arosa, and right? Even stumbled. Yeah, yeah. At the very like the last second, <laughs> crazy. Nice. Yeah, I, I wish I wish uh, it was a little bit more more like wrestling, and these guys could get their signature moves in at the end yeah. of every fight. I would love to see <laughs> yeah. Rolling Thunder at the end of every one. <laughs> yeah, Rolling Thunders are, are bad. At, every once in a while, some guys do have a signature uh, a signature move, but yeah, rarely do you get to pull it off. But yeah, that was a crazy fight, man. That that's up there fight of the year for me. Um, 
I'm happy for Arosa because he Arosa had to leave. He got cut from the UFC at one point and came mm. back. Really, uh, the huh. dude's had some ups and downs. Um, I mean, he's a fucking savage. I like to see him win. <laughs> but before that, uh, we had John Castaneda versus Miles John. We're gonna skip that fight for the sake of time. We're already at Hell an hour, yeah. mm-hmm. um, so we're gonna touch on Hakeem, mean Hakeem Dawadu versus Mike Trezano. Uh, and not much to say about this one, honestly. It'll be a quick one. Um, pretty much just a flawless performance by Dawadu. Uh, yeah, dude, so that dude good. was uh, wonderful. So much striking, so much power. Good takedown defense, like uh, everything. I was impressed all the way through. He was so impressive. I was unimpressed by Trezano, and I'm sure he's a fine fighter. Yeah, and Trezano's very good. Yeah, very good. That would do. It's one of those things. There's some guys. John Jones is the same way. There, if you think about striking and a combo as uh, like communication, right, and like as like a sentence, right. You want to have a good vocabulary, mm-hmm. right? If you're just throwing your jab. And you're, you're just doing a one-two over and over again. It's a pretty basic sentence, right? Not much flair. Not a lot of cool words, right? Not, Too many no, action no ten- verbs. Not enough nouns. Yeah, no, no $10 words are in the, that mm-hmm. sentence. But then you have someone who speaks eloquently, right? And they have such a vocabulary. And that's Dawadu, right? He has so many tools in his arsenal. He mm-hmm. has so many words that he can throw out. You have no idea what's coming. Right, he's throwing an outside leg kick to the thigh, to the calf, inside to the thigh, inside to the calf. Uh, he's throwing the front kick up the middle to the body. He's throwing it to your leg. He's throwing it to your face. He's got roundhouse kicks. He's got body kicks. His jab, his shovel hook, his over, his uh, his cross, his overhand, his hooks. I mean, you have no idea what's about to come your way, and and then he, there's openings. He's just throwing whatever the, whatever opening is there. He's throwing what needs to be uh, thrown to get there. And Trezano just really couldn't get much. And when he did land, Trezano did land a few times. Uh, Dawudu did a great job of just clinching, separating, and then it's just back to work. And it's just more of the same. He just completely overwhelmed him with so yeah. many different Suffocated strikes. Suffocated is the is the word I used to describe it. And the yeah. thing that uh, – this is one of the earlier fights I watched because I watched it in prelim order up to the mm-hmm. top where his corner shouted out, Trezano's corner shouted out, <clears throat> don't let him just turn his back like that when he whiffed a kick, one of the rare ones oh, yeah. that Dawudu had. And I'm like, mm-hmm. man, why don't people just ma- maul the dude that whips the kick and turns his back? Like, get on him. But well, I think it kind remember, of varies based on what your fighting style is, right? Exactly. And remember, we watched live uh, Calvin Cater versus uh, Chikaze. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what was the turning point of that fight. In that first round, Chikaze was lighting up Calvin Cater. And then he whipped a kick, spun around, or maybe he slips uh, one of the two. And then Cater just sprinted at him and seize the opportunity. And that's something that you really don't see too much. Right. Because it's not something that you expect, mm-hmm. right? You're, you're also you have not the ready reactions. to jump in yeah. on that. They're trying yeah, to think of the next interaction and they don't have time to react or aren't ready to, uh, but you have yeah. to, you know, that's the difference. It can turn it just like you mentioned. And my mm-hmm. final, probably smash bros reference <laughs> of the, of the episode, uh, when we played team tournament where it's two on two and you knock mm-hmm. out one of the opposing guys for good. And it's one on two. We had a guy that would be like, sir, you got to have honor. I need to yeah. fight each of you one at a time, not two on one. <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, bro, you lost the dude. And, and that's what it reminded me of when he said, don't let him just turn his back and not mm-hmm. don't attack him. He's like, I have to have honor, sir. That's what I remember yeah. at that moment. <laughs> yeah. uh, shout out, I mean, Hakeem Dawadu. It's been a while since he's been in there. I really like the guy. He's 13 and two now. He said in the post-fight press conference that if he would have lost this fight, he probably would have retired. Mm. And it seems crazy wow. to me because he he's so young. young. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's so young and he's so talented. And it's like, Mm -hmm. at this point, with this win, he's going to be in the rankings now. He wasn't in the top 15, but I'm sure uh, he's going to get into the top 15 after a performance like that. And I would love to see him fight Shane Burgos. I think Mm -hmm. Shane Burgos is ranked like 14. Um, And stylistically, I think that's a fucking awesome matchup, and I hope they do it. But we'll see. I don't know what uh, where his mindset is. Um, That would do is fucking awesome. I like the guy a lot. That's pretty much all, you know. Nice, nice, uh, nice. Well, not much to talk about in that fight, other than just how impressive he looked. Props, yep, exactly. Uh, yeah, he left us speechless. Oh, there goes my cat on camera. Yeah, <laughs> on the couch. Nice, nice. Uh, next, who do we have next? Yeah, before that, we had Chitty Bang Bang <laughs> versus uh, Mark Andre Barrio. Goddamn, not much time on this one, right? <laughs> yeah, let me scroll up to my short notes on this one. 
That yeah. was uh, that was wild. And th- uh, this is the one. <laughs> that was a short note. That was wild. <laughs> yeah, and then that's the one. Oh, and that that was the first appearance of Herb Dean, the God, is what I refer yeah. to him as as the Rev. I know you guys have your problems with him, but I think yeah. he's so cool because of his his hair and his general style and the black gloves, <laughs> all cool. Yeah. But he's getting hit a run for his money by the other Rev that I'll mention uh, in just a moment. But is this the one where that crazy spear happened? No, 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 that was not. no, no, it's not. Yeah. But the note I have on uh, in Joe Guani is that he's from Garland, and I hope I never run into him like in real life and get on his bad <laughs> side. Like that's not too far from yeah. Dallas. Uh, so anyway, uh, it was a good fight. Uh, yeah, this uh, happened 100% so quickly. striking accuracy. <laughs> eleven for eleven in his striking on this one, and it didn't take much. I think it was the first flurry he threw. Completely dropped him with that one too. Just the two over the top, beautiful, uh, and then just didn't let him uh, seize the opportunity. Right, just finish it right there. Yeah, um, is that, you think it was that reach advantage? I think he had six inches on him. Yeah, yeah, definitely helps, especially especially if you know how to use it, which he clearly does. Right, if you have the reach advantage, you're going straight shots the whole time. Just mm-hmm. Don't even let him get close. I mean, he just walked him down, lands his one two, a couple ground and pound shots, and that's a wrap. That's his UFC debut. Um, it's taken him a long time to do this. This is one of those ones you could see after the fight was just like so cathartic for him to get this win. Uh, Cause he's had a long career to get to this moment. Uh, so it was, it was cool to see him win his debut with, with a knockout like that. Yeah, it was really hard to, to, it wasn't exactly like a cross counter in boxing where they throw the jab and get, and get crushed in, in response. He threw the leg. Oh kick, yeah. And yeah. then he's out of position and just fully eats that punch and no plant yeah. leg to kind of brace himself at all. <laughs> yeah. Which knocks him backwards. And, and that's, uh, yeah, that's the thing that you'll hear Dustin Poirier talk about all the time. It's not about if you have a good chin or not. It's about if you put yourself uh, or allow yourself to get hit out of position. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's where the real damage comes, right? And that's, yeah, that's exactly what happened in this one. And I mean, the voice. I wish we could play audio and not get flagged because mm-hmm. the dude is like, like you said, he sounds like a villain. Like, <laughs> I mean, his voice is crazy, man. Just the deepest. I like the guy too. Seems like a really good dude. I'm excited to see more from him. But not much to talk about, right? I mean, yeah, kind of a flawless have, performance, a quick one. That's all I have on this one myself. And next is the one yeah. that I alluded to on accident. Yeah, and next is the one that when I was texting you and Ramiro about the fights, uh, I said, I truly believe we may have just seen a future champ. Hmm. And that's Jelton Almeida. Uh, he took on Marquez. Going into this, uh, I think Almeida was one of the highest favorites. Um, the dude, I mean, like, how do you look like that? Uh, the guy's, I mean, the guy looks like a fucking he sculpted superhero. out of marble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he came off a contender series win where he took on like a, a Russian guy and just completely out grappled him. And it was like, whoa, who is this guy? And, same thing. Uh, if you watch that fight, the exact same start. I mean, they're really? circling a couple, couple things, just kind of feel out the range, and then instant, just power double leg from the center of the cage. Dude. Just goes straight through you. Yeah, and you so these can't... fights are flooding back to me a little bit because, I, like I said, I watched these earliest. Yeah. But this fight had me saying, what the fuck? Because that, yeah. <laughs> that, that takedown was glorious to watch. It was like so acrobatic and powerful at the same time. Yeah. And then when he got that that mount and just the hammer fist and the sound of the hammer fist, dah, Dude. Blah, 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 yeah. blah. And then he tries to wiggle away, even give up his back if he has to, to try to squirm out of there, get underneath, get out from underneath. And then he's like, nope, get back in this position. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> that yeah. was fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. And, and Marquez, uh, he protested the stoppage, right? He, he said that it wasn't a great stoppage, but you don't have to be knocked out for the ref to stop it. Mm-hmm. If you, it, it's 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 about not intelligently defending yourself, and sometimes you have no options to intelligently defend yourself, mm-hmm. and that's kind of what this was. He couldn't get him off of him, he couldn't buck his hips, he couldn't he couldn't sweep him. He wasn't giving up his back because uh, Almeida was, was tight with his mount. Mm-hmm. Uh, he couldn't even spin. And how does he get the mount so enough. tight that he can't spin? So I can't if see you in the look, picture. Yeah, he's not super. He's not super high on the mount. He's a little bit lower, and he's almost like, uh, if you look at his, his feet, aren't in the picture, right? But his feet are almost crossed underneath Marquez. Oh, okay, I didn't see uh, they were locked up. Yeah. There. So some people will mount, and their feet are just kind of like out on the sides, you know. Mm-hmm. And he kind of tucked them underneath, and mm-hmm. and were almost crossed. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it's it's tight. And uh, Marquez isn't a isn't a a small guy, you know. Yeah. So 
So it's kind of easier to put that squeeze down. And yeah, those hammer fists were, I mean, absolutely Vicious. terrifying. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> I, like, I can remember the sound right now. That that's wild. And he basically tied the man up. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, he couldn't do anything. <laughs> You're forced to just do this. You can either wiggle this this much. Well, uh, and he would block a couple hammer fists, but you could see every single one that got through the guard was like shocking yeah. him. It was mm-hmm. like this guy's got power. He's super freak athletic. Uh, and yeah, his entries look like like almost like scripted animations in like a video game. Yeah, that's how he is, like this is the uh, other ref I mentioned, Mike Beltran, that made the yeah. uh, that made the stoppage. And, and I'm with it. One, that dude is an absolute mm-hmm. unit. That guy is so huge. Yeah. Like, you know he came in on a Harley. That guy looks like <laughs> a stereotypical Harley biker, Hell's Angels man. But yeah, I mean, he could have stopped him from having a more serious injury to the head. You know, you just yeah. don't know. So you're going to yeah. err on the side of caution as opposed to not doing so and being infamous like plenty of refs have done in the past that you guys have talked about. Well, it's funny that you say that because the last card, he was the one that ref that uh, I forgot his name. It was his debut against. Fuck, I can't think of his name. Well, if you can't uh, think of it, no one can. Will. <laughs> yeah, but but it was he got knocked down like five times in the in the one in one round, mm-hmm. and he didn't stop. The, and it took forever to stop the fight, and it was like we could probably stop this. And maybe because of that performance, he was like, maybe I'm gonna like stop fights a little Have bit a sooner. Hair trigger. And uh, mm-hmm. I thought this was a perfect stoppage. Yeah. Um, and and I was telling people, I I told shout out Christopher at work. Uh, I sent him the link to Almeida's contender series fight before this. Because I was like, dude, this guy, he's early on the prelims, but definitely watch him because he's he's coming. You know, nice. this guy's a he's he's a freak athlete. You can tell. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited to see him fight again. All right. We're at an hour 10. We got two more to go. Yeah, that was Phillip wild. Rowe. And just real yeah. quick one question. How many times did he reenact the hammer fist or he tried to wiggle away? I think it was three times. So he got yeah, the hammer yeah. fist, wiggle, hammer fist again, another <laughs> yeah. wiggle, and then a third round. Okay, three rounds yeah. of hammer fist. I think that should disqualify anyone. At that point, you know, look, I'm not getting out of this. Let's just call it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, you mentioned uh, uh, Jason Witt versus Phil Rowe, right? Yep. Yep. That was the fight before this. Um, Witt has had uh, a few performances where he'll get a takedown, flatten you out, and just kind of hang out on top. Hmm. Um, and that's kind of how the first round was. That was always going to be the story of this fight. Shout out story of the fight. But uh, it was, can Roe stop the takedowns? And if he does get taken down, can he get up? Because mm-hmm. on the feet, they're not even close. But on the ground, they're not even close. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just on the flip side. So it's like, whose style is going to win? And after the first round, it was like, oh, th- this is probably how the whole fight's going to go. Which going to get the takedown, control him on the ground, and just win by control. And then Phil Rowe got up in that second. And he back into the cage. He lands the left. The right over the top. And then the left again. And it's over. That's a wrap. I mean, that combo was lightning fast. It was just... Bah, bah. Everything extended, right? Nothing... nothing, uh, No wasted energy. Mm-hmm. And uh, Wit was just there for all of it. He just... I mean, clean. Just bam, bam, bam. <laughs> Sorry, my cat Margo has made an appearance on camera. There we go. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, you're right. And this is the one I said earlier, and I might have misspoken. But after those hammer fists on the ground, this guy definitely didn't wait for the ref to call it. He walked away yeah. before he said, uh, stop the fight, stop the fight. That yeah. was, uh, I mean, he was, that was out, crazy out. to see. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, it, it was interesting, too, because normally if you get taken down in that first round, uh, you're going to gas yourself just trying to get a wrestler off of you. Mm-hmm. And then he got taken down again in the second. It was like, oh man, how's this cardio going to hold up? Even if they stand up, is he going to have enough in him to 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 finish him? And then they got up, and Wit looked way more exhausted. He looked yeah. way more exhausted from trying to take downs. And I think Rowe spent the whole first round just kind of trying to hold him down and not really try to exert too much to try to get back up. He just kind of accepted that. He tried to stay fresh. Um, he's the fresh prince, man. Yeah, he's the fresh prince. He really is. Uh, so and yeah, in comparison, I know. Crazy yeah. there's similar weight. Right? Those are the two body styles, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh yeah, the extension that he got on those punches was was nasty. I mean, uh, yeah, and for I'm happy sure. for him. I like Rowe. Uh and like I gotta say, does did this fight have more did this card have more fights where the winners can just turn around and fight again in like a month and a half than any I know, other right? one that I can remember? <laughs> a lot of one sided fights, right? Where someone didn't take a ton of I mean, this one technically wasn't one sided, but as far as damage goes, definitely. Yeah. Right. Cause, cause Wit won that first round easy. Mm-hmm. Um, but 
but yeah, Roe didn't really take anything. He can probably fight next weekend. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, wild, wild to see. Uh, really cool. And even though I said that, even though I said they didn't take much damage or it was lopsided, it was still incredibly entertaining. Uh, so yeah. uh, definitely one to shout go back and watch if you guys are able to. Yeah, shout out to the matchmakers for sure. <laughs> yeah, before that, we had the, well, t- I mean, it's a quick, quick one, but. Um, before that, we had Malcolm Gordon versus Bondar. A lot of people um, had uh, Gordon losing this fight. This was a big upset. I mean, oh, kind of yeah. weird the way it happened. Yeah, um, this is a weird one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, and before uh, we get to the to the content you're alluding to, uh, this is the opening yeah. fight of the night and the first one that I watched, of course. And <laughs> the announcer says, Thank you for watching wherever you happen to be watching. And there's nobody yeah. in the stands. So who is he alluding to? Is he alluding to the Pirates? Because he said, thanks for watching on ESPN or wherever. So he knows y'all are out there. He's giving y'all some credit for the yeah. eyeballs. He's talking yeah, to you, Will. The man who doesn't pay yeah, for whoa, the pay-per-views. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> hey, who who didn't pay for this one? Who paid I for also one? didn't who pay, didn't for, pay this? for this one. I mean, <laughs> I could get ESPN through my subscription. Anyway, it's a long story. Yeah. Che- checking savings. Kevin Hart, you know, comedy routine on deck. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so I just wanted to say that. That was my first note. But mm-hmm. yeah, so to start this fight, Gordon was flashing the hands. He was he was cracking them uh, up until the takedown that ended it. Um, and real quick, we'll probably probably want to give a graphic content yeah. warning. Yeah, NSFW, right? uh, if you're squeamish, look away. Story of the fight, was- XXX. <laughs> so this is what happens, right? Uh, it seemed like it might have happened earlier than this, where it mm-hmm. kind of looked like it, his elbow popped as he tried to post up. But then this takedown, his arm was kind of trapped in that mm-hmm. takedown. And you can see the grimace there on him. And that you see his arm trapped. From here, after this, he they separated a little bit and he went to post and it completely popped out. Complete, and there it is right there out of socket. Um, I wonder if this is something that's happened before. Uh, because normally you have a if you have a joint that pops out like that shoulder, it's uh, more prone elbow. to do so again. Yeah, and it looked like the first time it kind of happened didn't look like it was anything significant uh, that caused it. And then after that, it was like, the, I mean, there's no coming back from that. And the next picture is the probably the worst one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah not great. Not how you want to start your fight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and that's how they started the night. So you know, set the bar, let everybody know. Hey, this is uh. It's not just a sport, you know. This is more than a sport. <laughs> but yeah, not much to talk about on that fight, right? Other than Gordon looked really good in a fight that a lot of people had him pinned to lose. Yeah, and that was his debut. Is that is that what I read or heard properly? No, no? okay. No, he's had a few fights. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, Bondar, Bondar, that's his debut. Yeah, that's the not, one. Okay, I got it mixed yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, kind of a shitty way to. I mean. The flip, if you flip a coin, right? You either have your debut, you get taken down, your elbow completely comes out of socket, or like Chitty Bang Bang comes out and drops him with the first combo he throws. Sm- <laughs> yeah, good smokes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You flip a coin on your debut, but yeah, that, I mean, uh, really good card. Um, it, it was one of those ones where the co-main and the main event kind of uh, weren't as exciting as the entire card up to that point. So I think a lot of people were kind of left with like maybe a sour taste on the card. Mm-hmm. But as a whole, pretty damn good top to bottom. It was cool all the way around. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I thought the main card and the wrestling exhibition before that one were great. Yeah, both the co-main, <laughs> main and co-main. Uh, co-main. So yeah, I, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of this card, and I'm excited. I'll definitely watch uh, probably the Adesanya fight uh, next week because I've heard a lot about Ooh. him and y'all talk okay. about. Okay, so. it's a rematch yeah. too. Yeah, She's, yeah, and, and, and Whitaker's one. the former champ. Yeah, uh, I heard that on the commercials, and it's not Whitaker the second; it's Whitaker two because it's the yeah. uh, the sequel, right? Because <laughs> it's the rematch. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. Whitaker Junior. Um, so let's see. Um, Rachmanov got a performance of the night bonus, um, and so did uh, Chitty Bang Bang. And then um, it's not listed here, but I'm almost positive that uh, Arosa and Peterson got a fight of the night bonus, and obviously Arosa gets both of them. So those are the uh, of the night awards. Mm-hmm. Um, only three, only three fights got canceled off this one. Um, Sam Alvey originally was supposed to fight. Um, I believe the order was he was supposed to fight Heinich. Heinich pulls out. They get Phil Hawes. Phil Hawes pulls out a week before the fight, and then uh, Brendan Allen takes over and knocks him out or chokes him out, drops him, chokes him out. The big one though, 
that sucks for me was uh, Jeremiah Wells was supposed to fight Tim the Dirty Bird Means. I'm a mm. huge Tim Means fan, so I like to watch him fight. Means had to withdraw. I'm not sure why, but other than that, that's pretty much everything that uh, that got canceled. Uh, kind of card kind of stayed together more than than most, especially during COVID. Nice. I mean, that's pretty cool, I guess. Uh, and <laughs> not much to say about it. But. <laughs> it's a shame uh, that the Dirty Bird didn't get to fight this time. But is he coming back in a couple months or something? I don't know. I don't know why he uh, had to pull out. I'm not mm-hmm. sure. I don't know if he's injured um, or if he got COVID or what. In terms of the next episode that's coming up next week, because there is a card next week, right? Yes. Next week is Adesanya versus Whitaker 2. Uh, UFC 271. So we'll talk about that. Taito Ivasa is fighting Derek Lewis. Oh, nice. Co-Main. Already? I feel like he just fought. He just fought. Wow. Uh, yeah. And then Jared Cannonier is fighting Derek Brunson. The winner of that will probably get the next title shot. Sorry, Strickland. Mm-hmm. Um, that's probably the next, the number one contender fight. Uh, then we have Kyler Phillips taking on the boy, Marcelo Pitbull Rojo. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? The dinosaur, the T Rex. Uh, and then my boy, Bobby Green, is fighting Nasrat Hakparas. Uh, that's a very good card. Very good card. Yeah, I've heard all those names before. It sounds good. Yeah, they got a lot of guys. Fabio Charant's fighting Carlos Olberg. That's a great fight. Alex Hernandez versus Renato Moicano. Uh, Silva de Andrade is fighting. Uh, yeah, very, very good card. Hmm. Very good card. Um, oh, shit, dude. They got Blood Diamond. This is... Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> blood diamond we were just talking about blood diamond before the broadcast the movie kind of yeah crazy. yeah but blood diamond is making his ufc debut on this card oh it's a person yeah <laughs> okay. and let me tell you this guy's about to make waves you, you're in on this early rich mm. this is ufc debut if he was an nft i'd make some money on the nft yeah this is early bitcoin right here blood <laughs> diamond i'm telling you right now this dude is gonna go far i'm excited i can't i just saw his name at the they have him at the very bottom i don't know if he's actually gonna open the prelims but uh Holy shit, I forgot he was making his debut on this card. Hey, that's badass. I, I hope it goes well. I hope you're right. I wish there was yeah. some sort of stock I could buy. I know. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, that's it for the preview. Uh, and then also, Ramiro will be back next episode to defend himself versus all the slander that we have thrown at yeah. him <laughs> this particular week. I'll be back just in the background. Maybe I'll <laughs> chime in if I watch out of Sanya or something. Yeah, uh, there we go. I do want yeah. to do social media before we go. Yeah, so we're at Story of the Fight on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, we were on TikTok technically, but we haven't posted anything. I don't know if we will. We probably will. Um, so tune in to see our first post. Uh, uh, where is our subscriber count, Will? We were at X yeah. amount last two weeks ago, and we are now. I think we were at like 248 before the last episode. Um, and now we are officially at 255. Hey, well, we appreciate that, you guys. Thank We're you for growing. subscribing. Please, if you know anybody that likes the UFC, recommend them. Recommend us to them. See if they can subscribe, like. Please review. Give us any feedback, positive or negative. We'll respond in either way. And if there's anything you want to see on the show, mention it, and we'll share your passion and enjoy it, too. And change the show up, because this is your show. We're just here as humble servants. Uh, Will, Ramiro, and I. Um, so please follow us on uh instagram twitter like will mentioned our podcast can be available in audio form on apple podcast spotify breaker radio public anchor.fm google podcast uh and anywhere else podcasts can be found <laughs> any final final words of wisdom will nope thank you rich for uh filling in and watching the fights doing yeah, the homework I uh, to clutch. yeah <laughs> and that's pretty much all i got for this week okay. well for Will, for Ramiro, for the viewers, shout out to HLBK uh, Omer and everybody else that commented. Uh, Will's friend or coworker that got in here, Tony. Uh, yeah, shout Tony. out to all of you guys. <laughs> and we'll see you guys next time on another episode of Story of the Fight. I love the UFC.